Hey friends and happy weekend. We are getting ready for another family event. If you guys caught my video a couple weeks ago, we had a cabin weekend where there was lots of food and lots of friends and lots of family and lots of fun. And so my family loves to do it up good whenever we have a get together or a weekend away or something like that. So this weekend, my brother and sister-in-law are having a seafood boil at their house and everybody's supposed to be bringing stuff to eat. There's gonna be water games for the kids. We have a couple birthdays in the family that need to be celebrated as well. So a nice big bash with lots of people. So I am kicking off today. I have everything kind of lined up here. We've got multiple things we're gonna put together. And you guys, I really, my guess is that this is only gonna take maybe two hours or so. We're gonna put a lot together in a very short amount of time, so I'm gonna be doing a lot at once. I'll try my best to keep things separated enough for you to know what all I'm doing. So the first thing I'm gonna get started back here is a big pot of water to take garden tea along. We have a big thermos that we like to put garden tea in, and my little patch of garden tea that I am growing in my patio garden out here is ready to be cut and harvested and made into garden tea. So I'm gonna go ahead and put water in here. I'm going to use my gallon pitcher so I have a ballpark of about how many gallons are in here. I think it's gonna be about two and a half in this pot. So we'll put in one good gallon. I think if I have my math right on how many cups this holds, it will be two and a half. Now, whenever I make this tea, I just get the water up to a boil and then I put the cut tea into the water and then I let it steep for about two hours. So I wanna definitely get this done this morning so that till this evening, whenever we're going over, everything is cold and I can have it all cooled down. It takes a little bit for this pot to get to a boil, so that's why I'm getting it started. Um, while we start into some of the other projects. Now in this one, we're going to put eggs. All right, so I put the eggs in here to make hard boiled eggs for deviled eggs. My mic cut out on me while I was putting these in here. So um, we're just gonna get these on a boil so they can cool down and we'll make a nice uh, tray of deviled eggs. These are days when I definitely thank myself for doing home canning and preparing things in long-term food storage because I am able to pull things out and use them on busy days like today. So I'm, in this crock pot, I'm going to be putting some of my home canned baked beans. I will leave the video linked below that I made these in or have made some in. I don't know if it was specifically the <laughs> this batch, but I did film how I make these at one point in time. And this last batch, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I put quite enough brown sugar in it, or so my husband says. <laughs> and so I need to add a little bit of brown sugar to these. And then the other thing I do is add just a little bit of water as well. So we're gonna add all of that into the crock pot. I'm not going to plug it in right here just because I want the workspace. So I think I'm gonna set it in our dining room to get things heated up. These, this is fully cooked. Um, so it just needs to heat and really dissolve the extra brown sugar that I'm adding in. This is a favorite of my family's along with the deviled eggs. Deviled eggs is something that my family has loved for a long time. And then this recipe actually comes from my husband's grandmother and she makes them for our family get, get togethers and things. But I decided to can them and it worked out perfectly and I am slowly dwindling down my last batch and I'll need to do it again. So maybe whenever I'm ready to can more baked beans, I can do a updated video um, on that. All right, I'm adding about a cup of added water to this and I will stir these over the next couple of hours as they are warming up. And then I've got my brown sugar here that I'm just gonna add a nice little sprinkling into it. Just stir that all in. And I'm gonna go plug this in in the dining room. All right, so like I mentioned, we also have three birthdays within the last week 
that we are celebrating. One of them is our daughter, and one is my sister-in-law, and one is my brother. And we decided to make it kind of fun to just do a fruit theme <laughs> to celebrate their birthdays. So I got a few fruit balloons, some fruit um, plates, and of course I'm doing some fruit cut up to kind of go along with all of it. My mom is making a watermelon cake, I think. Um, so there's gonna be lots of watermelon, uh, which is great on a hot day like today. I'm not sure how hot it is right now. I think it's definitely gonna be in the 90s today. It's very toasty. So I don't know if that was the best cut job for what I'm about to do, but I saw this cute idea on Pinterest, of course, to make slices of watermelon into kind of like a popsicle on a popsicle stick to hold and eat. I just thought it looked really cute. So I'm going to attempt to do it. I don't like exactly how I cut this, but we're gonna give it a try. So I'm gonna lay it like this, I think, yeah and cut it in half this way. We might end up with some pretty big slices, I'm not sure. I'll try this first. You're coming along on the ride with me. <laughs> Figure out how to do this. I'm hoping I didn't just make a big mistake in cutting it that way, but we'll give it a try. My water is almost to a boil. I did stop and make myself a quick smoothie for lunch so I can keep on going. All right, so. The picture, the slices looked probably about like so. And then I have, I went up to my daughter's um, craft area and grabbed a bunch of these popsicle sticks. And I think what I'm going to do is just make a little slice through the rind so that it's, it, we're able to push the popsicle stick through the rind. Let's see if it works. I might have to make a deeper slice let me get a smaller knife all right so smaller knife oh yeah i think that's definitely going to make it work out doing it that way these are going to be so cute and i did get seedless because i have a lot of really small nieces and nephews that i will love eating these and just figured it would be a bit more smaller kid friendly to have seedless it's so cute. Okay, so now we just need to make a bunch of those. <laughs> and I'm going to lay them um, in this nine by 13 pan and people can just pick them up and eat them. That, that's so cute. I'm definitely gonna save this idea for other events and things through the summer. Okay, so like I said, <laughs> we are ready to do some harvesting here. And what's great about this tea, and this is apple mint, by the way, or I think that's like more the greenhouse term for it. Um, if you go somewhere and you want it, or the fuzzy mint is another thing that people will call it. Um, the great thing about this is that when you cut it back, it comes back even thicker and even more crazy. So it's actually going to help it grow even better by me cutting a bunch of it off. And when it comes to how much to use, I simply eyeball it. We've been making this, my mom made this through my years of growing up. And so I kind of know about how much I want per gallon as far as how much of a bunch of leaves I want. So it's a little hard for me to give you exact amounts with this, but I'll show you what I'm putting in for about two and a half gallons. And everybody also makes theirs very different. Um, I know that I have siblings that they make theirs not quite as potent as I make mine. I think I make mine a little more on the heavy hitting side whenever it comes to putting the tea in. I put a lot of tea in, um, but some people don't put quite as much as I do. I know that much. All right, so we've got one, cleaned up nicely and I'm gonna go ahead and do both of these.
All right, it is already heating up outside for sure. This was just boiling. I turned it off before I went out to cut the tea and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. Now I'm hoping this all fits. It's probably gonna be right to the top. I'm realizing how much liquid I have. If it starts to run over, I can just scoop out some of the hot water. And then I have my spider strainer. If you guys watch my second channel, you know the little story behind the spider strainer. <laughs> Um, anyways, I'm going to just go ahead and put all this in. Some people wash theirs. I don't spray my tea or anything, so I'm totally fine with just putting it right into the pot. So everything I cut is going to be making the two and a half gallons worth of tea here. And I'm just gonna use my strainer to press it all down in. And then I also use this strainer to scoop the tea out. You can over steep garden tea um ask anybody that's left it on the stove and forgot about it overnight it definitely gets bitter it's not light and refreshing like it is whenever it is made correctly <laughs> so i'm just gonna press this all in here and i just like to go with a little extra tea versus not enough i actually did that so last week, I think I made a batch without enough tea and it really had very little flavor. So I'm always one to tend to put a lot more in than making sure, or to make sure that there is enough flavor. And it smells so good. In case you are curious what this is, it would definitely be very much like a mint tea. If you have no idea, if you've never seen garden tea at all, it's, it's more of a mint flavor. Um, not quite as strong as peppermint though. Just more of a sweet mint, I would say. All right. So it all fit in there really well. And I'm just going to push this to the back of the stove and set a timer um, on my phone to make sure that I take it off in between two and three hours is, is usually good. I already got a great reaction for these from my youngest daughter. She walked into the kitchen and her mouth dropped open. She's like, what? She's never seen anything like this. Of course, so her and my middle daughter are sitting out on the deck. They just had to have one. <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap this up with some press and seal just to kind of keep, I don't know, just to make sure that it's covered. And I just filled this up. The rest of it I diced up for our next little project. I have the hard boiled eggs on ice back here. Um, to cool them down, and of course the tea is steeping. Mainly just covering this so that no flies or anything get into it, and I'm going to put it into the refrigerator because everyone knows that watermelon is so much better when it's cold. <laughs> Strawberry season is actually coming to an end here in central Pennsylvania, but I happened to grab this one last flat um, this past week. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two trays I have here and we're going to make rainbow fruit trays, platters, whatever you wanna call them. And I think what I'm gonna do is to be helpful to you all, in the description box below, I will put the order of the fruit I'm using if you want to try to create a really colorful rainbow looking fruit. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take strawberries and line them up um, on one side and then I think I'm gonna do watermelon after that because these look a little more red than these do just to give it more of a gradient. Um, and we're gonna pile it up good. I know that fruit is going to be a huge hit on a hot day like this.
we are getting one great shower going on right now. It just was like the clouds opened up and down it came. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the next color we're gonna do is some orange and yellow. Yes, I'm just doing the lemons to put a yellow in there. Will they be eaten? Maybe they'll be thrown into a drink or two, but I'm going to cut them anyways just to give that yellow color to help our rainbow out. So the oranges, I'm just cutting them into wedges and actually my daughters already have some. They're out on our screen and porch watching the rain just pour down and I'm just cutting them like so and then I'm going to lay them all in here. Okay, next in the order, I'm gonna do green grapes, then blueberries, then red grapes. I kind of saw another fruit thing put together um, with these colors in this order and I thought it looked really pretty. And then the method to my madness here is once I've got the base layer put on, then I'm gonna go through and pile up even more. So that's why I have everything left out here and I'm just working on putting at least the bottom portion onto the tray and then I can pile it up and make it look really um, full and put together. Okay, we're about to get started on our next dish project, whatever you'd like to call it. I'm going to cover these as well before I put them in our extra refrigerator in our cellar. And then we are going to start in to some cowboy caviar. If you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a summer bean dip. So good, so refreshing. I was going for a lot of like refreshing type foods today with it being so hot and we are going to have you know, potatoes and things like that boiled with the shrimp and the crawfish and the other things that we're doing with the sea, seafood boil. So I decided refreshing and light is what I'm going for with these other things. Cowboy caviar is an incredibly simple dish that you pretty much throw together. It's a dip. So I do have the Tostitos scoops to eat these this with because it's kind of one of those that if you don't have the scoop style chips, you're kind of piling on your chip, trying to keep it all on there. So it is a great dip to eat with those specific chips or any scoop shaped chips. And it keeps raining and then the sun comes out and it rains again. So like if you see it getting bright and then dark and bright and dark, that's what's going on. So the base of this, I'm just gonna mix it all up in this bowl and then I have a nicer bowl to put it in for serving. But um, the base of it is some whole kernel corn. I could use my home Amish canned sweet corn, um, but it's a smaller kernel because I cream my corn and you want more of the whole kernel. So I just got some of the cans from the store of the whole kernel sweet corn. Then you're gonna need a can of black eyed peas and this is actually a double recipe. I am doubling it up since we're gonna have a lot of people. And in my opinion, you all know, 
my theory on, or not theory, but idea on meal prepping. If I come home with extra stuff, I'm happy because that means that I have some extra snacks or meals um, or things we can add to meals over the next couple of days. So totally fine with leftovers and that's why I'm fine with making big batches of stuff even to take to parties and things like that. Okay, so you're also going to add a can of black eyed peas as well. I say this in every video, but the recipes will be linked below for anything that has a recipe in this video. Sometimes my um, things I cook or show you all, they don't have recipes. And so you just gotta watch the video to find out how to make whatever I'm making. So I'm going to drain these, all of these, and rinse the beans so that we don't have any of the extra starches from the beans and we can put it all into the bowl. So I'll get these drained and then we're gonna add them in to the big bowl and then we'll add the rest of our ingredients, including our spices and other things to this dip. Got our black eyed peas, our black beans, and our sweet corn kernels. Next, we're gonna cut up two bell peppers into small pieces. So I want my pieces of bell pepper to be around the size of like the corn kernels and the beans that are in here. So we're just going to cut them into small strips and then dice them from there. Ooh, this has a lot of seeds in it. This is such a colorful salad. I love to put all of the ingredients into the bowl kind of separately in little piles and then mix it together. It's just fun. Make cooking fun, even for little things that only you will see as the cook. I think that it's always fun to make things look pretty and desirable to eat for sure. Red bell pepper is one of my absolute favorite vegetables. I love adding it to all kinds of recipes and it just has one great flavor. So that's the particular bell pepper I like to put in this. You can put green bell pepper, you can put a mixture of colors, yellow, orange, green, red, into there as well. Um, whatever you prefer, I just like the flavor and the color of the red. Um, but we're gonna put tomatoes in this too, so if you use a green bell pepper, you're still gonna get a nice red color in this as well. And this is where I have definitely went wrong in making this before, and that is not cutting my bell pepper small enough. And even those, I'm gonna go a little smaller with what I have here. Um, just making sure that it's all cut really small so that when you pile it on your chip, you don't have mostly bell pepper. <laughs> This is sort of a salsa of sorts. And one other way that we've eaten it before is on top of grilled chicken. It is so good that way. A little bit like a mango salsa or something like that, but you're just doing more of a bean salsa or bean dip per se. All right, so I'm gonna finish cutting the bell pepper and then we'll move on to the next ingredient. All right, so we are having one good thunderstorm, which is great because it's gonna cool everything down for this evening. And our electric actually flicked 
two turned off and on. We live out in the country pretty far and that does happen. <laughs> but I, in the meantime, I did get all of the Roma tomatoes cut up and the purple onion. Roman tomatoes work best for this recipe because they um, are not quite as juicy, so they hold their shape a little bit. And now we're going to take a juice, juice from a lime. The recipe calls for half a lime, but like I said, I'm doubling this up. And also I'm making a mental note that only a double recipe of this fits in this particular bowl. <laughs> Wasn't quite sure how it was gonna go. So I'm just going to juice this and I decided to kind of mix up the dressing in this dip separately in my measuring cup here because I feel like it's going to help mix together the spices and stuff a little bit better versus like just dumping it on. So I'm juicing up these guys. Oh, I love the smell of lemon. I mean of lime, goodness. And that might've said lemon earlier. I meant to say lime. Um, lime just smells so good. Such a great summer scent. I like any kind of body wash or candles that are a good lime um, scent as well. Okay, so, and I think I have made this recipe before with lemon juice just because I didn't have lime juice. So I have two third cup of rice vinegar. The particular recipe that I'm gonna be linking below does call for red wine vinegar, but we love rice vinegar. So I'm adding the lime juice into that. Then we're going to add two third cup of olive oil. Again, I think I've used avocado oil in this before too. You can kind of swap a few of these things out for maybe something you have on hand to not have to get something special just for this recipe. And then to those things, we are going to also add in two teaspoons of chili powder and then two teaspoons of cumin. I love cumin. As a kid, I did not like it very much, but now as an adult, it is something I really love in recipes. It's just so savory. And then we're going to also add two teaspoons of salt to this as well. Okay, before I whisk this together, I'm gonna put about one third cup of sugar or sugar alternative. I'm using actually a monk fruit sweetener in this right now, um, just to add a little bit of sweet. Some people don't do this. Some people do do this to this recipe. Um, I know that my family will particularly enjoy it that way. Now, before I put this over the bowl of everything else, I'm gonna chop a little bit of fresh cilantro. There are a few people in my family that don't care for cilantro, so I'm not gonna do a ton. I'm just gonna do a little bit throughout. It's gotta be in there, just a little bit of the flavor. Um, and I know it's not everybody's thing, and some people, I've heard it tastes like soap to some people. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you're one of those people. Um, but yeah, for some people it tastes like soap for some reason. Okay, get this all stirred together. I'm gonna give this a nice little whisk again just to make sure there's no seasonings on the bottom. We're going to pour it over everything. Oh, this smells so good. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it a nice stir. How delicious does this look? Oh, so good. And I'm really happy with the size of everything. It takes a little bit of extra time to make sure everything's cut up small, but it just gives you a better end result for sure. All right, I have a nice white serving dish here that it's going to make this color really pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the dip into this. Whoop, lost a few pieces. Oh, that fits in there, great. All right, lost a few more pieces, <laughs> but this is absolutely perfect. 
All right, we are on the home stretch, y'all. And if you are here for the healthy recipes I share most of the time, this is your time and point to just look away. <laughs> <laughs> because what I have to share with you next is not anything but healthy, truly, truly anything but healthy. So we are going to make a strawberry cream cheese lush dessert. And just as the name sounds, it is beyond amazing. So we're gonna start off with a nine by 13 pan and I'm just using coconut oil spray just to spritz the inside so that the dessert comes out a little bit easier. And we're going to use the food processor. This recipe really is for my husband. He has a special love for golden Oreos and the crust has golden Oreos in it. Yeah, you heard me right. We're just gonna layer on all the good things for this one. So I have some gluten-free golden Oreos. I think she calls for 30, six Oreos exactly. So I have my blade in my food processor here. We're going to chop up the Oreos first and then I'm gonna switch to my mixing um, tool in my food processor. So let's open this up. This There is 30 in one pack for the gluten-free Oreos. So I already know I can just dump an entire pack in here. In case You've never tried gluten-free Oreos because you're probably like, if I don't need them, why would I try them? We prefer the texture of the gluten-free Oreos and so does a majority of my extended family. We kind of discovered a couple years ago how the gluten-free Oreos really absorb a lot more milk and they just have such a good texture. So give them a try if you never have. I'm gonna throw an extra six into here, this is a pack my husband opened up and I needed a few more than one pack. All right, so that only took a couple seconds and we've got crumbs. And now I'm just gonna swap out the blade for my mixing tool. And I'm gonna drizzle in a stick of butter. So basically the crust is just made out of the golden Oreos and some butter. I forgot to mention that this is a no bake recipe. So super quick and simple, but we do have to have some refrigeration between some of the layers. So to hurry up the process today, I'm actually just going to put it in to the freezer to get it to harden as quickly as possible while I'm making the other layers. So we're just gonna press that in. Smells so good. If you know what golden Oreos are and you like them, that is what this smells like with a hint of butter and oh, delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this into the freezer while we make the next layer. Okay, I've got my electric tea kettle back there heating up water for the next layer, but let's focus on the cheesecake layer. So I have two blocks of cream cheese that I've softened. I'm gonna pop them into my stand mixer here with the whisk attachment. We're gonna put about two teaspoons of vanilla in here, and then a cup of powdered sugar. I love using my tea kettle to heat up water really quickly. It just is a whole lot faster than using my stove top if I need it fast. All right, so we're going to beat this mixture together first with the stand mixer and the whisk attachment, basically making like a cream cheese or no bake cream cheese mixture. Okay. 
Okay, once you've had that combined and there's no lumps left from the powdered sugar or confectioner sugar, you can pull it off. And I have a nice big spoon here to help me out with this next part. We have a container of whipped cream. This is something I so rarely buy, but for a special occasion like this, we're gonna use some, actually we're gonna use a lot. <laughs> this recipe calls for three containers like this. This is the first one going into it. So we're gonna fold in this whipped cream and then two and a half cups of strawberries that I chopped up from that flat of strawberries you saw earlier. So we just wanna fold this in. We're not going to whisk it or whip it. Just going to get it all kind of in swirls together, if that makes sense. So we've got that in there, and then we're gonna put in the small diced strawberries. These are so good. I love making things with strawberries when they're in season because the flavor just hits you in the face. It's so delicious. So just going to fold this all together. Again, this is the cream cheese layer. All right, now I'm going to grab my crust out of the freezer to put this on top of. My family loves layered desserts like this. We like to make eclair dessert and lemon lush and many, many more. So this one is just added to the list. So good. We're just gonna spread it out evenly. And then there is another layer that goes on top of this and then a final layer on top and then we'll sprinkle it with some strawberries to finish it all off. Back into the freezer it goes while we make the next layer. All right, so for the next layer, I did clean out the mixing bowl cleaned everything, kind of starting fresh and new. And I have this hot water back here. So we are going to put a three ounce, yeah, a three ounce pack of strawberry jello. It's an off brand, it's not jello brand, um, into the bottom of the mixing bowl. And then we are going to add three fourths cup of very hot water. And then I'm just going to drop the whisk here and whisk it until it's dissolved. All right, so it's mostly dissolved. So now I'm going to put a 3 4th cup of ice water. I have ice in there. And we're going to put this on low and let it cool down a bit. I guess that's what you get for putting ice cubes in with jello. <laughs> At least it kind of matches the colors of my shirt. So to prevent more splashes, I'm actually just going to detach the whisk and do this by hand so it can cool down. I'm just going to let the ice cube totally melt in the, in the liquid and then just let it cool for a few minutes. The jello mixture is completely cooled down, so now I'm just going to add in yet again another container of Cool Whip or whipped cream. This is really just an off brand of Cool Whip. And then we are going to put this bowl into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, just allowing the jello to sort of thicken and set up. First, I'm going to see if I can stir this in and combine it. Sometimes it sort of resists. <laughs> the combining, oh, I love that pink color. It adds such a fun layer to this dessert and smells so good. I'm not the biggest fan of Jell-O, but strawberry Jell-O is pretty good. I'm not using the whisk because I don't want to deflate the whipped cream. I just wanna fold it into the Jell-O mixture. So we're gonna give this probably, honestly, it looks pretty good right now. So I may even just give it about 15 minutes. It's not too bad as far as how thick the mixture is. 
Okay, while we're waiting on our layer for our dessert, we're gonna go ahead and pull out the tea because it has been enough time to steep. And I usually like to kind of squeeze the tea on the side of the pot. And this looks really good. This is definitely the color we're looking for when it comes to the right amount of tea in here. So I just have a plate over here that I'm going to scoop the tea out and let it drain for just a second. And then what I'm gonna do is take this um, kettle and actually stick it in my bonus refrigerator in our cellar and help it speed up the cooling process so that we can ice it and we're good to go for tonight. All right, we are finally getting to the end of this. I'm gonna try to make them all fit in this thrifted old school egg Tupperware that I have, but if not, I have an extra container here. And I'm just going to cut these in half. If you've never had a deviled egg, you definitely need to make them. They are so good. Um, and we have a few other things I need to tie up besides finishing up the cheesecake strawberry dessert. Corey went to pick up a helium tank to blow up with some balloons. And I also need to pull out my Cricut and make a little cake topper with my daughter's name, my sister-in-law's name, and my brother's name all on it so that we can stick it on top of the watermelon cake that my mom is bringing along. Okay, so basically to make the deviled eggs, you just need to cut the egg in half and you're going to take the yellow part of the hard boiled egg out. So you, you have all your egg whites over here and you can put these on a plate. They don't, you don't have to have a deviled egg plate or container. It's just really convenient when you're taking them somewhere to have this. That's why even though it's not the most fancy looking egg container, <laughs> I knew that with a lid, it would definitely be convenient for as often as our family loves having deviled eggs at different events and stuff. It's been a while since I've made them actually. I've made, used to make them a lot whenever our family got together and just haven't. So I'm sure everybody will be glad to see them. And I do have a few more than what my tray can hold here. So I'm going to just put them in the other container. They'll probably kind of float around in there, but that's okay. We'll just make it work. So my mother-in-law, not that long ago, told me what she does with her deviled eggs, and that is she puts a little bit, just the littlest bit, of some maple syrup in them, in the filling, I'm sorry. And so I've been doing that the last few times I made them, and my family really, really enjoys them that way. So I'm going to do that today, but the main thing that I add is some mayo, and I don't really measure, just kind of guessing how much I need here. And then also some mustard. And I'm gonna add in a little drizzle of maple syrup. I would love to know, ooh, that was a little more than a drizzle. Might have to scoop some of that out. Um, I would love to hear what, um, uh, the thing, what you like to put in your deviled eggs. Everybody likes to make them differently. People add all kinds of things. There's so many variations to deviled eggs. So I'd love to hear in the comments if your family enjoys deviled eggs a lot, or maybe there was a way your grandmother made them. Um, they're just such an old recipe, the old thing that people have made for a long time. So through the years, many people have come up with creative additions like a little maple syrup or um, I've done even avocado deviled eggs, I believe, in the past. You can do pickled deviled eggs. There's just so many things you can do. And I'm just going to smash these. Now, my way, um, sometimes I do fill them with a spoon where I'll just scoop the filling back into the eggs. But today, I'm actually going to do it in a little bit of an easier manner, and that is putting it into a Ziploc bag and then squeezing, cutting the corner of the Ziploc bag and then kind of piping them 
full again. Before we fill the deviled eggs, I'm going to put the pink layer on this. Still just a little bit runny, but I'm gonna fold it all together in here and it will set up on top of the, the cheesecake. Honestly, the color of this, <laughs> and some of you might cringe at this, but it does not smell like this. It looks like Pepto-Bismo. That's all I'm gonna say. It's like spot on color. <laughs> and as you can see, I think it could have sat up just a little bit more, but it's gonna be fine. It's sitting on top of the cheesecake cart, so it's definitely not gonna mix in with that. Just evenly disperse it, and then I'm gonna put it back into the freezer while we finish up the deviled eggs. Just going to scoop it into the bag. My husband really likes when I actually use an immersion blender on this and make it very, very smooth, but I'm gonna have a little bit of pieces of the egg yolk in here, which is just fine. For most of us, that's how we eat it. Okay, I'm just gonna bring it down to a point. Cut the corner off, make sure nobody gets it in their egg. <laughs> and I'm gonna go through. Now a couple of these are broken up, but honestly, our family loves these so much that I'm just going to keep the broken ones because somebody will eat them. Some people add paprika to these. I'm just going to Go ahead and just leave them the way they are, but just see how fast you can pipe and refill the eggs whenever you have it in a bag like this. It goes really fast. Then I usually go through and try to find any that look a little sparse to use up the last of the filling. All right, we got a few ugly ones in there, but they'll still do for somebody to enjoy some deviled eggs. So I'm just going to cover these and pop them in the refrigerator. Okay, while this was hardening, I've been back here working with my iPad and my Cricut to make a special cake topper. I'll show you guys here in a second that uh, for the fruit cake thingy my mom's making. I don't even really totally know what the correct term is. It's just a cake shape made out of fruit, <laughs> like a carved watermelon. So I'm topping this off with the last, the final container of whipped topping. And I'm gonna slowly, carefully, Spread it out over the pink layer because I really want the pink layer to be its own layer. So we'll see how it goes. I just love how pink that middle part is, even if it reminds me of Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> and then obviously this is going to go back into the refrigerator until later. Okay, that, that pink layer is definitely set up fairly well. I can see that it's not picking up with the whipped cream. And then I did dice up a few more strawberries just to top the whole thing off. My husband was over here inspecting this before I started this clip and he is anxious to try it. So, all right, that looks so good. Okay, I'm gonna take my strawberries and top the whole thing off. Does anybody else struggle with family members wanting to eat food that you're planning to take somewhere with you? <laughs> and you wanna show up with an entire dessert without portions taken out of it, but sometimes it doesn't always happen. They were already snitching a few deviled eggs. My husband <laughs> and the girls, <laughs> they were through here a little bit ago. Okay love how this looks and so anxious to hear feedback from everybody. So I'm gonna 
Put this back in the refrigerator until it's time to go. Okay, so I'm going to make a little topper. I'm just, I just have these skewer sticks. I'm gonna stick them on. We're just cutting them out of some cardstock. I can't, I say cardstock lightly because it's very thin cardstock. And I asked my husband's opinion and he thought we should do white for the back and black for the lettering just so that it all pops really well. So I have everything laid out here and I'm gonna get my machine cutting. I do have a light grip mat it seems to work a little easier to get paper to come off without ripping the paper. Okay, so my Cricut project was a little bit of a fail. I have been struggling with the pressure amount with the blade with papers and also what mats to use with paper like cardstock and stuff so we decided to just diy it ourselves <laughs> and so i just wrote it all on here taking this with to put in my mom's little creation and then i got this up to put the t in we're gonna get loaded up and head out 